All right, so today we are going to talk about shear stress in beams, and I'm going to look into some of the comments that you made in terms of the area that you want me to focus on. And I'm going to start with the uh, first problem that we had on the pre-class assignments, and by that, you want to review some of those important concepts. All of these three problems are emphasizing a certain aspect of what we previously discussed on the videos in order to understand how to calculate the first moment of area, how to calculate the shear flow, how to calculate shear stress, and what is the thickness. So I'm going to talk about these questions in details as you requested, and feel free to interrupt me if any part requires more explanation. So the first problem that I want to start with, there is one T-shaped element which consists of two blocks on the side and one block at the middle part, and we want to know if, cons if we consider area number one, which is a segment on the left side, what is the first moment of area, what is the value of shear flow, and what is the shear stress? Okay, in order to determine first moment of area, or Q, we need to understand where Q comes from. I'm going to show you the animation that we saw in the video again to understand what is the area that is required for the calculation of Q. Look at this beam, which is subjected to moments on the sides. We have discussed that if we want to determine the balancing force and shear flow and shear stress between this segment on the left side and the rest of the section, we are going to separate that segment like this and then draw stresses that are coming from the bending. These are the bending stresses. Because one moment is larger than the other one, stress distribution are going to be unequal. So one is going to be larger than the other one. In this case, the right one is going to be larger than the left one. If we replace those stresses by resultant forces, as shown here by FR and FL, these forces are not equal to each other, right? If we want to determine the resultant force, F sub R, we need to use the integration. So we need to determine what is the volume of this stress block. But on the video that we talked about deriving the equations, we noticed that instead of the integration, the integral of y dA is going to be equal to the first moment of area, or Q. So I don't need to integrate anymore. I can simply use Q value. But the question is, what area should I consider for the calculation of Q? The answer is the area of the part that you separated and you are determining the forces that are acting on that part. For this problem, we separated one part, one segment, and I'm going to determine Q value for this area where this stress is acting on. Area of that segment is simply A multiplied by B. A in this problem is given to be 2.5 inch, and B in this problem is 4 inch, which gives us 10 squared inch. The d value is similar to what we have seen before in determining the moment of inertia. d is the distance of centroid of each subsection to the centroid of the entire section. So the centroid of that hatch section would be on the half of its height. So it's the distance of that centroid to the centroid of the entire section is shown here by orange. I'm going to call that d. And in order to determine that first, we need to determine how much is the, where is the location of the centroid of the entire section, which is shown here by red as y bar. And knowing that, the distance of centroid of that hatch section to top of that section is half of its height, or b over 2. So d is y bar minus yi, similar to what we had before. y bar should be calculated. yi in this problem is b over 2. Okay? That shows that we need to calculate how much is y bar for this problem. There are three segments, and I need to calculate the area each of each of those and their distance to top of the section. Area of the left segment is A multiplied by B, and its distance to top of the section, as we discussed, is B over 2. And because there are two segments similar to each other on the left and on the right, I'm going to multiply that by 2. Plus the area of the middle part, which is A multiplied by C. I'm going to divide that by the area of the entire section, which is AB multiplied by 2 plus AC. Given the values of A, B, and C for this problem, the y-bar is going to be 5.18 
inch as the distance of the center to top of the section. All right, knowing that, we can plug it back to this equation and determine how much is d value. So 5.18 minus 4 over 2 will give us 3.8. After determining these values of a and d, we can go and calculate how much is the value for q. q is going to be area multiplied by d. 10 multiplied by 3.18 will give us 31.8 inch cubed. All right, the second step, it asks us for determining shear flow. We have two equations. The first one is VQ over I. But in this problem, we don't have the shear force. So instead of that, I'm going to use the similar equation, which is delta M over delta X, which represents V, and then multiply that by Q over I. Now let me plug in the values. Moments on the right side is 4,800, and on the left side is 3,600 pound inch. Then I'm going to multiply that by Q that we just calculated, 31.8. Then divided by the moment of inertia, which is given for this problem, 916.5 inch to the fourth. I need to divide that by delta X. If you do the calculation, this is not going to be the right answer. What do I miss here? What is wrong here in this calculation? This is something that someone asked during the pre-class discussion part. Uh, the moments are in pound feet and the rest of your measurements are in inches. Exactly. That's right. So, I have to convert that into inches by multiplying that by 12. Now the answer would be 31 Point twenty-four pound per inch. What does it mean physically? It means that the shear force in the unit length of the element in one inch of this beam is going to be 31.24 pounds per inch. This problem doesn't ask you to determine what is the balancing force, but let's assume that the problem is asking us what is the balancing force. How, would, how do we determine that? We know that in one inch, the force is 31.24. The length of this beam is 16, so we are going to multiply that by L, and that will give us the total balancing force that should be transferred from the left segment to the rest of the section. All right, shear stress for this problem is shear flow divided by the thickness. This is another tricky part. <clears throat> what is the thickness that I have to consider for this problem? This is the most requested question to be answered for these three problems. That shear flow or the balancing force is acting on this side of the element, right? So this is where this block is connected to the rest of the section, which is shown here by red. The area that we use for determining shear stress is the area of this red part, which is length or delta x multiplied by this thickness or t. So the thickness is always the width of the section or the, the dimension of the section where that separated block, which is shown here, is connecting to the rest of the section. Note that we have already taken care of the length of the beam when we wanted to determine shear flow because shear flow is the balancing force in the unique length of the element. So the only dimension that I need to be careful about is the thickness or this dimension that we see that on the cross-sectional area. Q is a 31.24 and V is going to be 4 inches and that would give us shear stress of 7.81 pound per square inch or PSI which is the final answer for this problem. Now I'm going to talk about the second problem. In this case the difference here is that the entire top section is connected to the rest of the section. So for calculating Q, we are going to calculate the entire top segment. So the entire of the hatch section has to be considered for the calculation of Q. Q is area multiplied by D. Area is going to be 3A multiplied by B. D is actually the same as the previous case that we had because we just changed the width of the section so the vertical coordinate of the centroid has not changed and that would give us the same d value as we had in the previous case d was equal to 3.18 and i'm going to plug that back into this equation and q value for this problem is going to be 
is 95.5 inch cube. For step number two, we need to calculate the shear flow, VQ over I, or it is going to be delta M divided by delta X, Q over I. For this problem, delta M is going to be the same, the moment didn't change, I is the same, delta X is the same. The only parameter that has changed is going to be Q value, which is 95.5 inch cubed. And that would be 93.7 pounds over inch. So the answer makes sense because in this problem we have larger area. Larger area means larger Q and that means larger shear flow. So 93.7 is three times higher than the shear flow that we saw in the previous case. Now I'm going to go and talk about the last part, which is determining shear stress. So shear stress is going to be shear flow divided by the thickness. But what is the thickness here? Again, in order to identify the thickness, we need to look at this section and see where is the contact area between these two parts. Remember that when we wanted to determine what is the thickness for the previous problem, we looked at this red area and we knew that the length has been taken care of already and we just wanted to determine what is the dimension on the cross-sectional area which is this vertical direction. Now let's consider the second beam. In that case the area where that balancing force is acting on is actually this area, right? So this red area where the top element is connected to the bottom part is the area of interest. In this problem, the thickness is just the thickness of the web because this is the area where this top element is connecting to the bottom element. Now we can plug in the values and then divide it by A, which is 2.5, and the answer is going to be 37.5 PSI. Now let's go to the last problem, which is similar to these two cases, but instead of having the moments acting on the sides, we have shear force acting on the sides. Okay, so in this case, what area do I need to consider for the calculation of Q? Again, I can assume that the left segment is connected to the rest of the section. So Q should be calculated for this hashed area. And that would have the same Q value. What about the second step? I'm going to copy again the second step and see what is the difference. Can someone tell me what change should I make in this problem in order to make it compatible with the data that we have for this case? You should just use the, uh, the P. You don't need to solve for um, the Q. That's right. I have to use the V value instead of delta M over X. In this case, shear force is given to be 1,200 pounds. That's going to give us 41.6 pounds over a square inch. And the last part is going to be unchanged compared to the first problem because the contact area is going to be the same. So the thickness is going to be B again. The magnitude of shear flow has changed to 41.6 and that would change the magnitude of shear stress. So that would be 10.4 pounds over. All right. We want to emphasize three important aspects here. How to calculate Q, how to identify the right equation for determining shear flow, and how to calculate the shear stress by identifying the right thickness for the problem. And by contrasting these problems, I hope that we can emphasize the differences between the different cases.